and this kind of brings us to the next point, right? Which is when we're looking at all this stuff, right? So right now you're fairly confident. You have an understanding of basic anatomy. You know how to move. You can kind of look and go, okay, I want to squat. This is what a squat theoretically should look like. This is how I would squat. And um, then you might be like, okay, well, for me to actually get the best quad stimulus, this kind of movement is not going to be the best, right? I've tried the movement during the exercise, like you said earlier on, we'll go for that squat variation. And you know, during the movement, I felt my low back was the limiting factor rather than my quads. And um, they weren't getting as much of a stimulus as I wanted. The next day, again, the low back, the glutes, they kind of felt like there was something a bit more going on. They felt a little bit more doms. The quads, I wasn't feeling that much, right? So this comes back to we need to be able to analyze the goal of that exercise, which again goes back to the discussion we had in the last podcast, where you have to have a pretty good idea of what the goal is, right? So we have a pretty good idea of what the goal is. Let's say in this case, it's to build muscle. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to pick certain exercises because I want to build muscle. And one of the muscles that you want to build is the quads, right? So you look at your exercise selection, you look at your program that you've designed up until now, the exercises that you picked, and you go, I'm actually not feeling my quads as much. I'm feeling my glutes, I'm feeling my low back, right? So if you look at that and you are actually able to be honest with yourself and go, this is not actually effectively targeting my quads. And the reason I say, if you're honest with yourself is because we often don't align our exercise selection with our actual goals or our perceived goals. Like you might be like, I want to build my quads, but you have this uh, enamorment, if you will, uh, like you're enamored with the squat. You know, you see other people squat big weights and you're like, oh, I actually want to push my squat because it's something that you can do, you know, pretty much anywhere there's a gym. And then also you can compare yourself to others. And that's, you know, why people like to do it. But you might be like, okay, well, actually, this is not going to be the best exercise for my quads and some other exercise is going to be better. So we have to be able to look at the goal of the exercise, the goal of the overall program, the goal of the exercise. And then we need to be able to pick a better exercise or modify that exercise so that we can get a better stimulus for what we want, right? And again, in the case of this, you might be like, well, you know what? To get more towards this idealized squat form that I know is going to target my quads more because I have a basic understanding of anatomy and you know, you could say biomechanics as well, you could be like, I actually need to do something like a hack squat, right? Because that's actually going to allow me to be in this more upright position. It's going to allow me to get a little bit more forward knee travel. It's going to allow me to be in a position that targets my quads more, right? So you can go on that and go, okay, so I'm actually going to swap out this squat. I'm going to swap it out for a hack squat, right? Or again, you might be like, you know what? Actually, that's not the reason you know, I actually just need to change it to a low bar squat. That's actually going to target my quads more because what's happening here in this high bar squat position is, you know, I'm a little bit, my, my torso is a little bit too long and I'm tipping forward a little bit too much. And, you know, it goes over my toes a little bit and then my hips shoot further back and you know, different things like that. Right. So you're like, if I was actually in a low bar position, which, you know, people would say, oh, this is going to target your glutes more. This is going to target, you know, your hamstrings more even. And um, you could be like, well, for me, if I was to do that exercise in a lower bar position, it actually does allow me to stay a little bit more upright, get the knees forward, traveling a little bit more and actually get more quad stimulus, right? So you need to be able to either modify the exercise or pick a different exercise to better target what you actually want to target. And again, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you know what you're trying to target. And oftentimes what happens is we just have this shotgun approach where it's just like, oh, we're just going to do a million and one exercises for the quads because that's what's always been done. And we're going to hope that that leads to the outcomes that we want. When in reality, like there probably is a more precise way of actually targeting the muscles that we want to target. You know, would you agree with all that, Gary? Like in terms of we need to go back to the goal of the overall exercise plan, the goal of that actual individual exercise. And then we need to use that information to actually either modify that exercise or pick a better exercise. Cause I would say for the vast majority of people, they should, you know, oftentimes just pick a better exercise. Absolutely. And I think they, this increases in priority with uh, training age or inv- advancement as well, because one of the things that you run into as you become more advanced, especially if your goal is muscle building is that you're going to require a higher level of volume. Uh, so you're going to be doing using heavier weights, obviously, cause you're stronger, but you're going to be doing more sets And then you're probably going to be taking yourself closer to failure on every set in order to get decent results. And with that comes obviously a lot of stress on your joints and other muscles that 
if they've picked up, you know, niggling injuries over the years might flare up at the, those, those higher loading um, thresholds. So effectively you end up with these kind of inherent barriers to you being able to apply the training stimulus that you need to, in order to, to get those adaptations. So if you're smarter about your loading, so for example, choosing the exercises that you know give you the best um, stimulus to fatigue ratio, as some people say, um, that's going to give you better outcomes. So for example, um, it might be you find that when you do front squats, your quads are just on fire. You know, your quads just get hammered or a hack squat, your quads are getting hammered. Whereas with a back squat, you find that your low back or your hips um, or hip musculature takes more of the load. Like, like for me, a back squat, my adductors always become the limiting factor in terms of overall volume tolerance, whereas other exercises get a bit more quads out of it. So in those cases for advanced lifters who are trying to maximize muscle building, thinking about the exercises that allow you to get the greatest stimulus on the target muscle without the limiting factors of um, sore uh, joints or muscles or whatever, um, that's definitely something that you want to be looking to, especially if you're finding you're at that point where you know, you're, you're trying to get your, your 20 sets a week for chest or whatever, but your shoulders are just becoming the limiting factor every time. And as a result, both your strength and your muscle building have stagnated for quite some time. Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely agree with you in terms of that, because this is so important for your long-term progress to actually be able to pick exercises that don't cause you pain, right. That don't lead to, again, these different joint structures or, you know, other muscles will call it like as you said like you might be like oh i want to do squats for my quads and all of a sudden your adductors are actually the limiting factor it's like we can choose better exercises and this is something that during the pandemic i, I was you know saying to a lot of our clients uh, in terms of like it's rare that you actually first of all have access to the best exercises anyway you know people were freaking out going like oh well i don't have access to you know this fucking unbelievable chest press machine that i normally have access to right and you might be like well realistically even with access to that it's probably not necessarily even the most perfect 100 exercise that you could be doing for your chest so we're always somewhere on the spectrum or the continuum of this is 1000% the best exercise for you, for your individual mechanics, for your individual anatomy. And then also this is a crap exercise, right? So we're somewhere on that spectrum at all times, right? You might be like, oh, I actually get a phenomenal response from my chest muscles from a bench press. Like we'll just go archetypical. You're just like, oh, a bench press works my chest fantastically, right? But just because you're getting great results from that doesn't mean that something like a, I don't know, a reverse banded Smith machine chest press or a bench press is not going to actually be even more beneficial, right? So we're always somewhere on that spectrum, right? So what are we actually trying to achieve? Again, we go back to our understanding of anatomy. We want to progressively apply tension to the muscles that we're trying to grow, right? And ideally, especially in the context of individuals that want to make progress over the long haul, you know, we're not just going to go, oh yeah, like I can progress for 12 weeks and then all my joints fall apart. And we want to actually make sure that the muscles that are trying to be targeted, they're the ones that are the limiting factor. And it's not the joints or other muscles that are the limiting factor. You might have to modify an exercise, even though you are still getting good returns from that exercise, right? You might be like, okay, well, actually I'm feeling a little bit more, you know, again, we'll use the bench press. You're feeling a little bit more shoulder uh, joint pain, something in there, you know, maybe it's your bicep tendon. You're kind of like, I can't really pinpoint it. You might be like, well, actually I need to modify my exercise technique, even though I'm still getting good returns on investment. You know, and you'll see this all the time, especially as people advance, they'll be like, right, well, actually I'm, I'm built a pretty muscular physique. I've built a pretty strong physique, but I still get shoulder pain or I still get this, you know, in the script kind of pain in my shoulder when I bench press. And you're looking at them going like, man, you just bench pressed 140 like kilos for five. It's like, you have pain, you know? So like, why would you? Like you, you, you're getting great results from this exercise when in reality it's like, well, they could have got better results from a different exercise with less pain, you know? So it's not like, getting stronger or bigger or whatever is a cure-all for this like you can get stronger or bigger you know whatever in spite of the fact that you're not doing the best exercise because the human body realistically at the end of the day doesn't fucking care because it all comes back to tension right it all comes back to this is the tension that you are applying the stimulus that you're applying to these muscle cells in this case and they're responding in the best way that they can so that in future 
they are better able to you know survive in this environment you know so even if the you know stimulus is not absolutely perfect ideal for that muscle cell it's still going to respond in the way that it, it, it does right but you could still be choosing a better exercise right so it does come back understand the anatomy understand the goal of the exercise choose better exercises over time or modify the exercises so they are better for you over time and you will be able to continually progress and this is something that often goes back and forth in my mind i'm like do people get limited like what causes a plateau you know someone's been working out for 10 years is the plateau caused by the stimulus is stimuli that they have available to them you know it's like well like they've absolutely maximized all they can get from just your basic squat right it's like they're not actually getting any more from that but there is actually still some quad growth there it's just in the form of a leg press or it's in the form of a hack squat or some other exercise where it's like the limiting factor for that quad growth was the fact that doing a squat always caused the low back to be the limiting factor. It wasn't actually the quads. And even though your quads have grown, they didn't grow to the max that they could have because you weren't really effectively stimulating them. Whereas you swipped, swapped to something like a, I don't know, again, a reverse banded hack squat. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, actually I've never felt my quads, you know, feel as pumped as this. I've never felt them feel as, you know, in pain as this. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, now I have an extra five to 10 years of muscle growth to milk from that. You know, it's like, that is one of the thoughts that I have, like, you know, rattles around in my mind. It's like, oftentimes, and you see this all the time as well, where people do change exercise modalities. They learn more, you know, they've been tra training for 10 years, 15 years, whatever. They get exposed to some other information, better information. And then they start changing up their exercise technique and their exercise selection. And all of a sudden you're like, well, you're actually continuing to get results, you know? So that is something that kind of rattles around in my head, but there's no huge real answer to it right now, unless you have any insight for that, Gary. No, I'm afraid I don't. I didn't think so. So anyway, this all comes back down. So we've understood anatomy. We've understood, understood to an extent exercise selection in terms of, okay, we want to move a certain way. We have this idealized way. Record yourself. Do you move like that? No, you don't move like that. Let's modify this. Okay, we've modified it. You're actually targeting the muscles that you want to target. Cool. You can actually feel it during the exercise. You can feel it the day after, whatever. You're actually picking exercises that lead to the target muscles being the limiting factor, not some other muscles or joints. And we're in a good place, right?